trips and outings give the boys an opportunity to continue in their masculine identification through participation in typical boys' activities. The opportunity is also provided to match themselves against one another and accept the reality of their strengths or weaknesses. The competitive factor, however, is underplayed. Neither success nor failure evokes special comment from the therapist or the children. Bob's restlessness has completely disappeared. His tidiness is in sharp contrast with his earlier disheveled appearance and is particularly significant in view of his refusal to bathe when he first came to us. His mother, who was seen occasionally by our psychiatric caseworker, reports that he no longer has temper tantrums. He no longer wets his bed, does not resist attending school and does his homework unassisted. He now has friends and when last seen, the mother said, for the first time in my life, I am enjoying Bobby as a son. She further suggested that in view of Bob's improvement, treatment would no longer be necessary. Bob has been treated exclusively in activity group therapy. The satisfaction of Bob's social hunger, coupled with the therapist's calm, accepting attitude and the restraining action of the group, have served to strengthen his ego and his self-control. Albert's physical bearing and coordination, too, present a contrast to the feminine demeanor displayed at the first session. The fact that he repeatedly works with a hard, resistive material such as wood further reveals a fundamental character change. Albert's mother reports that he no longer plays with girls and has given up his interest in housework. He now associates with boys. Albert's inordinate attachment to his mother has decreased and the school reports that he works up to capacity. Like Bob, Albert has been treated exclusively through group therapy. The group provided Albert with models for masculine identification and a testing ground for his masculine drives that proved adequate and supportive. now applies himself industriously to a painting which could be interpreted as a portrait of his former self. There is a striking resemblance in the expression on Bob's face at this moment and the imp he has drawn. A while later, Bob blots out the imp. One might ask, is Bob blotting out his former self? As for Henry, it is clear that he is neither moping nor withdrawn as at the start. He is purposeful and confident. Henry no longer avoids children and his bearing is erect in contrast to his former stooping posture. Henry's mother reports that he belongs to a baseball club and has friends who visit him at home. He is much less dependent on his mother and no longer follows her about. Henry's withdrawal and defiance at school have also disappeared. Henry, too, was treated exclusively in activity group therapy. The support supplied Henry by the therapist and the consistent group acceptance of his emerging powers broke through his defensive withdrawal, enabling him to develop the courage to deal with reality. Later, Henry plays checkers with Bob. The decrease in Bob's hyperactivity and the increase in Henry's animation have brought these two boys to a common level. 
This leveling off is one of the basic aims of activity group therapy. The calm and orderly atmosphere of the group, epitomized during the refreshment period, reflects emotional growth and inner control. Each boy's ego has been strengthened and his self-esteem built up through experience with actual situations and interaction with the others in the presence of an accepting substitute parent. The change in each boy, however, has been gradual, almost imperceptible. Take Albert, for example. When we first saw him, his movements and actions were markedly effeminate. By the 18th session, a slight increase in masculinity could be observed. In succeeding sessions, Albert took to wearing dungarees and engaged in boys' work with his hands. He overcame his timidity to an extent that he was able to stand up against aggression. And in this session, Albert's physical bearing and coordination are in full evidence. As for Bob, in early sessions, his hyperactivity and distractibility were sharply displayed. He acted out his aggressiveness and hostility, reaching a peak of destructiveness. Then Bob changed to withdrawal, and for a while seemed afraid of the group. But in time, Bob developed freer relations and ease, as well as control, enabling him to concentrate on his projects. And in this session, Bob is a tidy, calm, controlled individual. As we saw, the other boys have to varying degrees also made progress. Jack, originally completely isolated and morose, can now laugh spontaneously. Mortimer, once timid and restless, now has more confidence and control. David, originally very withdrawn, has developed a certain amount of ease in group relations. Finally, there is Henry, who was so fearful and never played with children. At first, he stood frozen in a corner, his mouth twitching, isolated. Then, gradually, he began to move about the room, still anxious and making no contact with the other boys. In later sessions, Henry took part in play. His twitch disappeared, but he still acted out his joy in an infantile manner. Soon, he was able to assume the responsibility of serving the refreshments. In time, he joined in projects with other boys and developed to the point where he dared interfere with the activity of an aggressive boy like Bob. Finally, we see him a more mature, confident individual. At the end of the 65th session, a considerably changed group of boys sits at the refreshment table. Each now is more prepared to face life on his own, to cope with the stresses and strains of modern living. Each now has a better chance to develop into a happy, constructive adult and fruitful citizen of the community.